Welcome back. Today I have a guest who was uh, who took a medical procedure that was insisted upon by the Canadian government. She found herself afterwards mysteriously paralyzed from the neck down. She's been having struggles with uh, talking to doctors about what actually caused this or uh, maybe even admissions of where this actually came from. But afterwards, the Canadian government offered her medical assistance in dying as a way out. Kayla Pollock, thank you so much for joining me today. I learned about your whole story from Tamara Litch uh, recently. She reached out to me and said, you really need to talk to Kayla. Thanks again for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Now, through the course of this interview, um, I, at some point for the audience to know, there's going to be some things that we're going to have to dive into that we cannot talk about on this platform, unfortunately. So at some point in the middle of this interview, uh, we're going to cut it and we're going to go over to X. You can do that now. The link is in the description down below. Uh, at any point, you can go over and watch the entirety of this. Uh, but at one point in this interview, we'll have to uh, move uh, away from this platform. But Kayla, thanks again, again, for, for joining me today. I understand, and we're going to get into what happened to you uh, medically, but from what I understand, you, you haven't had the, the easiest run in life just in general, correct? Uh, I wouldn't say so, no. Could you tell no, just a, a little bit about this, about your story? Um, yeah, I... I uh, found out when I was very little that uh, when I came into foster care that I came in with broken arms and twist breaks and cigarette burns and you know I found my adopted mom when I was 22 or sorry my, not my adopted mom my uh, sorry my biological mom and you know she uh, she showed me crack and you know she was she was just not a good person she was you know, just not a good person. And uh, uh, I met my father when I was uh, in my 30s, and he seemed like a really decent guy. Um, everything seemed really cool about him. We got along really great. And then uh, after I became paralyzed, he disappeared. So um, without, uh, without a word of coming out of his mouth. What was it? So, what was it like for you after you got into foster care? Because I understand you turned your life around. I mean, you weren't given very good circumstances to begin with, but I yeah I um yeah I did turn my life around. Um, I I thought I was at the point where I had turned my life around to the point where everything was going so well that like nothing possibly could happen because. You know, I'd already gone through so much that there was just no way anything else could happen. I guess I was sort of at that point of thinking in my life. But, uh, you know, I went through I went through alcoholism and uh, really, really, you know, strongly. And I uh, I cut that out, you know, cold turkey and and um, and uh, used a drug that's no longer on the market called Anabuse, actually. Um, where if you, uh, if you take it, um, and you drink, you'll get very, very, very sick, but they took it off the market because people would actually drink on it. Where for me, I wasn't going to drink on it. I, I didn't want to get sick. And, uh, I guess there was lots of people that just decided that they would get sick on it. They didn't care. So, um, yeah, I, it really helped me. I don't know what I would have done without it, but then, uh, you know, when COVID came along, uh, you wouldn't be able to use it anyway because uh, it would have given you reactions to like hand sanitizer. So like you oh, wouldn't really? have been able to use hand sanitizer. No, you wouldn't have been able to use hand sanitizer because it would react to any alcohol, like food alcohols, um, like anything, like 0.5% beer, um, like any kind of alcohols it would react to. That's so, interesting. What kind yeah. of reaction would you get from it? Um, you could get like, uh, for instance, like with like, uh, um, like, um, if you were talking about like hand sanitizer, mm -hmm. you could show up with a positive alcohol screen. Um, or you could show up with just, um, like rashes and things like that. So um you could get sick um just kind of things like that so 
Oh, interesting. Um, I had never heard of this. I, I, yeah, I personally didn't get sick. I was very careful. I read the ingredients in every product. Um, I was also, I've been type one diabetic since I was 11. So medically I've been used to reading what's in every product since I was 11 so that I knew exactly how to carb count, how to bolus for insulin, uh, how to, you know, you know, how exactly how much per carbs, exactly what to take. So I had really good medical knowledge just from all that, actually. Well, it sounds um, like the, like this yeah. because and I was I was listening to your interview because uh, you had done an interview as well with the Canadian uh, Independent, and I'll put this on the screen right. here. And this is really good. I, I want I want everybody. I'll leave all the links for all of this stuff down in the description down below where people can go check it out. And they they did a, a really good job at showcasing exactly what you had gone through, and not just again what we're going to get into in a little bit here about uh, medical stuff that happened later in life. But uh, the, the fact that, you know, you'd gone through all of this stuff through, the, you know, your foster care, uh, where, where you, you what situation you had from your, uh, your biological parents, and then uh, you got into, uh, what was it rescuing uh, animals? Uh, actually, I worked at, a, at an animal sanctuary for a long time. I worked with big wild cats, so lions, cheetahs, um, servals. Uh, and then I ha I worked with lemurs, monkeys. Um, I worked with um, a lot of parrots. I specialize in avian, so uh, a lot of parrots. Um, you know, uh, reptiles. So I mean, our house was always filled with um, all sorts of strange animals. Uh, you know, and uh, it was it definitely the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. My son, um, he picks it up really quick. He, uh, you know, he would, you know, pick up a chameleon in the right way. I taught him the right way, you know, so, I, you know, there was he wasn't going to hurt the chameleon. The chameleon wasn't going to get irritated and bite him. So we never even had an incident where he uh ever got scared or where the, the animal ever got scared or hurt, but he, um, he seemed to really like that too. So, um, I actually took him to, um, you know, one of my old works one day and, um, we got some pictures of him and I, and, and, uh, uh so I think I, I, we, uh, we had a, a friend or a couple of friends with us and, we got some pictures and everything of, you know, him and I with the lion and everything. And, you know, I was, I was used to speaking in front of crowds. I spoke with Cesar Milan in front of 19,000 people at the ACC when, uh, uh, cause I used to train service dogs and guide dogs. That's so. the dog whisperer, Oprah. correct? Uh, for people who yeah. don't know who that is. Uh, yeah. He, he worked with Oprah and, uh, Will Smith and a lot of celebrities. So oh, wow. yeah, it was it was pretty surreal to realize that my career had just you know gone gone that well, and you know it was just sort of amazing to you know I really wanted something, so I went out and I did it. You know, I'm I'm that type of person. And then the pandemic happened. And this is this is when everything really changed for you. Now, um, I understand at, at one point you were paralyzed from the neck down, and this is no longer uh, the case in its entirety, correct? Um, yeah, it, at one point I was paralyzed completely from the neck down. Um, after receiving some steroids, I had transverse mellitus. After receiving some steroids, I got some movement in my arms, although that doesn't mean I have feelings. So my arms are always like ice cold and they clench together. Um, they like when I'm sleeping, they're like clenched together and they're very painful. And, uh, you know, even texting sometimes or trying to keep up with my phone is really difficult. Um, and uh, like typing is just not possible at times. And uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the arms were, I'm like, I, I'm not, I'm not going to 
live like this. I'm going to at least get my arms back because I need to be able to, to hug the people I love. I need to be able to hug my son. And I am not, I am not doing, I am not going to live unless I can, you know, hug my son. And I was, I was bound bent that I was going to at least be able to use my arms. So, because I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't move. So, and this was for a long time. So, and what did you say the condition um, that you have is called? Um, it's called a, uh, acute transverse mellitus. And, and, and what is that? Uh, um, it's a condition that is, uh, it's actually known to be caused by things like, well, it can be caused by a, a number of different things. It be, can be caused by viruses. It can be caused by, um, for instance, And they ended up stopping that. It could so, be so for, for people on YouTube, accidents. for people on YouTube, just uh, this would probably be the point where uh, go over to the, the the video on X that we have in the link in the description yeah. below. I'm gonna have to actually bleep those uh, things that you just said on YouTube. This is actually the way it works uh, these days. Uh, you can't say certain oh. things. So unfortunately, yeah, if you want to view the rest of this conversation, go over to X. The link is in the description down below. Uh, so sorry for cutting you off there. Um, no, that's okay.